they're very susceptible to going rancid, right? And rancidity isn't something that we hear a lot about nowadays, but it used to be a big concern. Um, rancid fats are toxic fats. You want to avoid eating things that are toxic. And seed oils are, of all the fats that we consume, the most likely to go rancid and become toxic. And the result of that toxicity is... I would argue, uh, why we have this epidemic of chronic disease. So when we talk about rancidity, making them toxic, where along the processing does that happen? So when does that happen throughout that process? It happens throughout the entire process, right? Um, I saw a really interesting talk, uh, and the guy compared seed oils to LDL, right? Seed oils are 400 times, contain 400 times as many rancid fat molecules as an LDL particle does, right? Now, an LDL particle, we, we all hear lots about LDL, but most of us don't understand that a native LDL particle is totally harmless, right? So that's a pretty good thing to use as your benchmark. And if you are consuming vegetable oil, seed oils, that are four, contain 400 times as many rancid fat molecules as an LDL, those rancid fat molecules are going to go into the LDL and they're going to become atherogenic LDL, right? That's what your cardiologist is worried about. He's worried about LDL particles with uh, rancid seed oil molecules in them, basically. And this has been known since the 1980s to be the primary driver behind cardiovascular disease. I would argue that all vegetable oils are rancid. They do have a standard for rancidity. Um, I haven't been able to find yet why they have that particular standard, but that standard is 400 times what your body is expecting. So that's a problem, okay? Um, they also are so you consume rancid oils, your body absorbs the rancid oils, absorbs them into things called chylomicrons, which are basically delivery packages. It's a type of lipoprotein similar to an LDL particle. And it shunts these into your bloodstream. And the first place that they go is to your heart, right? Your heart loves fat for fuel. So when you eat fat, your heart gets first dibs on the fat. So if you're eating rancid toxic fats, Obviously, having that bolus go straight into your heart first place is not exactly ideal. And then from there, after your heart and your arteries have a chance to absorb it, then it goes out into the rest of your body and gets absorbed. And, you know, at a later date, your liver gets the opportunity to detoxify it and then send it back out into the body in LDL particles or in BLDL, which are turned into LDL particles. I think one of the most surprising papers that I found in looking into this stuff was a paper from the 1950s when they were looking, trying to determine why radiation, why you get radiation poisoning. Good question, right? And it turns out that you get radiation poisoning because the polyunsaturated fats in your body get oxidized and they're toxic, right? So radiation poisoning is effectively polyunsaturated fat poisoning. And they took these rodents and they injected. So the primary fat molecule in seed oils is a fat called linoleic acid. They injected rancid linoleic acid, linoleic acid hydroperoxide, into these rodents and it killed them very effectively. Since the 1950s, it's been understood exactly how toxic these are. In fact, they've used it as, I saw another paper that made me very mad when I first saw it. And after a while I realized it made it a lot of sense. They were talking about using vegetable oils as a cancer, cancer treatment, right? So they would feed someone, you know, the theory was, and they did this in animals, that they would feed you a lot of vegetable oil, and then they would use radiation to oxidize the vegetable oil in the tumor, and that would kill off the tumor, you know, and what kind of effect does it have on your body? I mean, we know this in great detail, right? A rancid fat can cause another fat to go rancid, so it can cause a chain reaction in your body. This is why we have antioxidants in your body, right? The primary antioxidant in the body is 
something called glutathione. And if you, for instance, have an animal that can't make glutathione, it won't be born because the uh, lipid peroxidation, you know, is the term for rancidity, is so top is, you know, if you don't have a way to break it, break the chain reaction, it will kill you quite quickly, right? So if you are unable to make glutathione, you're not going to be born because you will die in the die in the uterus. So it can cause other fats to become rancid. The rancid fats can go and damage proteins. It can damage DNA, you know, pretty much any other molecule in the vicinity is going to be susceptible to the effects of these toxic rancid fats. So for instance, one of the more gee whiz, that's terrible things I saw is there's a paper talking about how people can become allergic to their own DNA, right? That's horrible. And they're not really becoming allergic to DNA. It's that these rancid fats are binding to DNA and the body sees these rancid fats essentially as indicative of a bacterial infection. And so just like with poison ivy, which is also caused by rancid polyunsaturated fats, right? The poly the poison ivy rash is the same process. Your body interprets this as an infection and goes to try and clear out the infection. Now, of course, it's not an infection. There's no bacteria or virus there. It's attacking your own body. In that case, the DNA. Obviously, being allergic to your own DNA is a very bad thing. When you eat a fat, they're most, I don't know what the exact, well, let's just say there are two paths that this fat molecule is going to take, right? One of them is going to be used as fuel and be oxidized. And polyunsaturated fats are preferentially used as fuel. But you think that that happens essentially for the same reason that your body, pref your body has like a cascade of things that it will use for fuel, right? So at the top are things like ethanol, right? Ethanol is toxic. <laughs> Sorry, guys, but it's just true, right? So when your body gets ethanol, it wants to get rid of it as quickly as possible. And one of the ways that it does it is by oxidizing it, using it for fuel. Glucose, same thing. When your body eats glucose, it ramps up its metabolism because one of the ways it gets rid of excess glucose, which can also be toxic, is by using it for fuel. So fats are the same thing. In fats, there's a hierarchy, right? The polyunsaturated fats are the most unstable and therefore the most likely to become toxic. And they are the ones that are preferentially used for fuel. And they're used basically in order of the likelihood that they're going to become toxic to the body. Next phase, next step down, monounsaturated fats like the fats in olive oil. Um, those can become rancid, but when they do, they don't become very toxic. And, you know, that's one of your body's favorite fats is monounsaturated fats because it can use them, you know, for phase two that we'll get to in a minute. And then the most stable ones, the least likely to become rancid or saturated fats, right? So when your body takes these, when your body gets excess glucose, the first thing it does with it is use it for fuel. Second thing it does with it is turn it into a saturated fat because that's the safest storage form that your body has.